Welcome to the DevWorm channel, and today we're going to learn to make randomized weather just like that right there. Now, obviously, you can make it fade into darkness so it looks clean. But as you can see, it starts raining, and now it stopped raining. Now it stopped raining, but you can see our little character here has come back because it is no longer raining, so she can now work the shop again. So we're going to be going over how to do all this stuff here in this episode, and it's going to be a pretty cool episode. But before we get started, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and drop a like on this video so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own good at games as well. Will it rain again? I don't know because it's on a different wait time. It's on a quick wait time too because it's only sunny from 20 to 60 seconds and it's also only rainy for 10 to 30 seconds. But obviously if you're making this for your actual game, maybe you want to up those wait times a little bit so it's like sunny for 5 to 8 minutes or something like that. But as you can see, it works good. And uh, yeah, let's go over how to make this right now. Okay, so the weather is basically just going to be an overlay on top of our main scene, right? So to do that, we're going to go with a brand new scene and we're going to make a static body. So we're going to make this a static body, 2D. And then the static body, we can just name this to weather control because it's going to be the control of all weather. So if you want snow, lightning, rain, whatever, whatever type of weather you want, acid rain, any type of weather any type of weather you can think of this is exactly where you would do it right and then we'll go with a canvas modulate and then on this canvas we can just name this like rain color i guess because it's going to kind of tint the entire screen so that's what a rain modulate or that's what a canvas modulate does so if we put any tint everything behind it will be tinted right and we want we want everything to be tinted to a darker color when it starts raining right so then we need a particle system right so we need we'll go with a particle 2d and then we can basically just name this as rain and then we also are going to add a timer and first of all let's set up our particle system so our particle system first we need to go to a texture and we need to add a texture and to do this there is going to be a link in the description for a little texture here and all it is is two pixels so it's literally just two pixels of or maybe it's a little bit more than two pixels maybe it's like a actually i think it's only two pixels i think it's one on top one on bottom and that's it right and that's going to be our rain animation and if you do want to download it there will be a link in the description to go and download this exact uh sprite or it will take you to an itch.io page so you can download it but if we drag this into our texture you'll see that we have a little rain particle now we need to go up to our process materials and we need to do a new particle material and now it's raining but the rain it looks horrible it doesn't look good so if we click on these this rain particle there is going to be a ton of stuff so we have lifetime random trail emission shape but we're just going to go to a mission shape for now and on a mission shape instead of a point we want a box as soon as we do that you'll see that it kind of expands a little bit that's only in a one by one area so if we make x equal to like 200 right so if we go let's say, let's say x 200 it really starts to spread out right and then if we we line this up whoa 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 okay we, we completely messed it up but if we end up lining this up, it's not going to let me line it up, is it? There we go. So if we end up lining this up to the middle, just a little bit above, you'll see that it spawns on all sides of the screen at random times. But you'll also notice it doesn't make it all the way to the bottom, which is not bad. So, I mean, which is bad. So if we go up here to our lifetime, we can just double it. And if we double it, the particles last twice as long now so they don't disappear until they get to like right here which is good so now it looks like it it rains it looks good the rain looks good it's just there's not enough rain right so if we go up to amount and we make it something like 200 let's go with 200 that looks more like rain that looks more like it's raining and then if we go to our speed scale, we'll make this like 0.8 because that's a little quick. Maybe you can go a little bit lower because that's just the speed that it falls. 
and then the randomness will go all the way up so the rain particles are all different sizes and they're not all the same size you can even add like let's go with 500 particles see what it looks like you could do that but I'm, I'm gonna go with like we'll go with like 300 and that looks good so that's basically all there is to the rain now obviously we have code so we can kind of randomize it and if you have like let's say you have snow animation so if you had snow you would make another particle 2d and you just name it snow and then you play the animation based on how you want in the code here in just a second and then let's say okay I'm gonna go over this in a minute but like let's say when it's raining you want the chickens to go into their coop well that's gonna be a, a global variable change and on the chicken you'll say or in the process function of the chicken you'll say if global dot weather equals rain then like go to the coop right so that that's how you would do with the chicken but we don't really have that but let's make it like a little dark like this so we have a it's much darker now and then now if we go and we make a weather control script we add a timer we can make this a one shot an auto start we'll also make this like 15 seconds because think about it when the game starts you don't want the you don't want to instantly swap you don't want to instantly swap the weather as soon as the game starts right because it's gonna now it's gonna swap 15 seconds after the game starts but then again, you might also not want this. What if you want like a Stardew Valley type of style where it switches every day? Well, then you wouldn't have a timer, right? You just say if day change, like if the day changes, then you know randomize the weather. So you'll say like if current weather equals none, then have like a 20% chance to have rain, have a you know 80% chance to be sunny, or like a 10% chance to be uh, windy and a 70% chance to be sunny. You could do something like that. But I'm just gonna make it with on a timer, so it's completely randomized. And to do this, we are going to go into our weather control, and we are going to make a new variable. And so this will be var current weather is equal to for for now none, right? But then let's say you have like we can have like none rain snow or whatever else you want right so all your weathers you'd have them right here so you know and then this would be like rain this will change to rain snow windy whatever whatever type of weathers you need right and then we'll go to the ready function and we'll do if current weather is equal to none then we will go with rain dot visible or uh, we could just do self dot visible right yeah we'll actually just do self dot visible equals false and then we'll do else or we'll do if uh, weather is equal to rain then we want self dot visible to equal to true but then again, this is only because we have one animation, right? We only have rain. But let's say you had snow. So if you had snow, okay, I'm just gonna do it like if you had snow. So basically, let's say we had no weather, right? So then rain dot visible. Rain dot visible would be equal to false, obviously, because it's rain. Then you'll go with like snow dot visible would be equal to false, right? So you just make them all visible, but then you'll do rain color dot visible equal false, right? And all that. And then down here, when it is raining, you want these to be equal to true. And then you want this to be equal to true. Let's say you had snow, then you do snow dot visible equals false, right? Because it's not snowing, it's raining. That's basically how you set that up. So now if we instance this into our world, we go over here, we instance in our weather control over the top of everything like that. We say, so when we start the game, it's going to have no weather. So it's just going to be a sunny day like normal, which is good. 
but then let's say we go in here and we make it rain all right so let's make it rain now if we play you'll see that it will start with rain and hey that looks good but we need to randomize it so to randomize it first of all let's go to our global i'm gonna go to our global script real quick if i can find it global script and we'll do var weather weather equals or just weather so basically then when you got like the shop we'll say when it rains we'll make this uh this character go away right because the character doesn't need to be out in the rain so basically this is a very 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 simple setup we'll just go to our our shop wherever our shop is i have no idea where our shop is because I, by the way, what you're seeing here, this is a horrible way to set everything up. Horrible way to set everything up. But it is fine. So, animated sprite. So this is our shop worker. So, we'll just go to our process and we'll basically do if, weather, or if global dot weather is equal to rain, rain, then we want, then we want our, you know, like at animated sprite dot visible to equal false. And then we got else if global dot weather equal to none. Then we want our animated sprite dot visible visible to equal to true and basically that fixed everything up so if we play what happened what happened did we not update it yet okay okay we did okay we didn't even update it okay so that, that's my bad we have not even updated the weather of the global variable so it's still nothing but we'll update that in just a second so you'll see it work here in just a second but if we go to our timer, we go and we get a node and we get a timeout. That was a bit off off topic, but it, it's going to be important just so you know how to like make other stuff in the game do stuff when it's raining. So like if you want stuff to hide when it's raining, that's how you would do it. But if we go here and we have on timeout dot timer. So whenever our timer times out, we'll do if our current weather uh is equal to none right then we can go current weather equals rain this is just going to sw swap back and forth but you know normally you'd want a percent so to make a percent or to make it do it by percent you'll do a rand range right rand range 10 or 30. So this, this is gonna set the wait time for a timer. So now the current weather is none. So now it's raining. So it's gonna rain from either 10 seconds to 30 seconds, right? And then we'll timer, timer dot start. So it's either gonna rain for 10 seconds or it can rain for a max of 30 seconds. But then we can also go else if current weather is equal to rain then we want our current weather to equal none. And then we want our timer dot wait time to equal a random range from, so this is how long it's gonna be sunny. So we'll go with like 20 seconds to 60 seconds. So that's how long it's gonna be sunny. And then we'll do timer dot start just like so and that all works but we need to update our global weather so to do this we will make a physics process function physics process or actually we can just go with the process we don't need a physics process and then we can go we can get our global dot weather variable is going to always be equal to our current weather and then we can also do if our, or we can just copy this up here from our ready function. 
so we're always updating the graphics and if we save and then we go to our world and we play what happened you see see like the shop guy's gone so our worker's gone when it rains our worker is gone when it rains. Does he come back when it stops raining? Obviously, you can still move everything under. You can still click. The, the rain has no effect. Obviously, that's a horrible transition, but if you want to add a fade, it would be pretty easy. But then, yeah, our shop person comes back when it's sunny. So, right, that works. You can still buy everything. Let's say we want a strawberry pack. Boom, we got our strawberry pack. We can do everything just good see if it rains and it's completely random times right but obviously i have at such a short time normally you know to do this you'd want it sunny for five minutes to like eight minutes and then maybe raining for three to five minutes right at max but i have it at like 10 to 30 seconds right so obviously you would not have it this low obviously you would not have it this low in a normal game i'm just showing this so you can see it coming on and off because it is a test game. But I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you learned something important today. And I hope this series is helping you become a better game developer. And there we go. It's raining. Our person in the shop disappears. Everything is good. But if it is helping you become a better game developer, then please go down below and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel and it pushes this video. So more Godot devs that want to learn how to make their own Godot games can learn to do so as well random times the rain went off but thank you all so 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 much for watching have a safe and a wonderful rest of your day